दिस इज भारत एफ एम बजेगा भारत झूमेगा भारत ये है भारत एफएम बजेगा भारत झूमेगा भारत नमस्कार सत्याकाल वेलकम एंड आदाब यू आर लिस्निंग टू भारत एफएम और वन ऑफ इट्स काइंड मल्टाइलिंगुअल इक्लेक्टिक प्रोवाइडर ऑफ एंटरटेनमेंट इंफॉर्मेशन एंड न्यूज टू इंडियन अमेरिकन हेडक्वार्टर्ड इन सिंसिनाटी ओहायो भारत एफ एम एज शोज आउट ऑफ सिंसिनाटी शिकागो एंड फीनिक्स We take pleasure in our ability to cater to your bhakti, chusti, sphurti, shakti and masti needs with our audio and visual shows. Check out bharatfm.com for our online program schedule and archives. I'm sure the content will definitely tickle your senses. Tune in via the 24-hour web streaming on bharatfm.com or via the Bharat FM app. More information can be procured at 5134885070. Namaskar hello friends this is Meghna Deshmukh and i welcome you all to another episode of next gen sitare i hope you have had a wonderful week this last week india celebrated a very very uh, important fun festival the first festival of the year which is uh, which is a harvest festival as you can say but known by different names in different regions so uh, we have uh, lohri in the northern region bihu in the eastern region uh, makar sankranti in the central region and pongal in the southern region so these are all harvest festivals and a very nice beginning to the new year so wish you all my dear listeners and viewers a very happy harvest season and may this whole new year bring a lot of prosperity and success to you all so with that said let's come back to our episode of next gen sitare as you all know next gen sitare is dedicated to presenting younger talents our next generation as you can say uh we have been uh, showing many different uh, areas in music uh we had a dance uh, performance uh, tabla i'm sorry a sitar performance vocals and today i'm really very excited to present our very first uh, tabla performance now tabla is the most original classical indian uh, instrument you can say and i am so excited uh, to even let you know that the tabla performer today is actually a american born so that is vincent kelly who is a drummer and a tabla player based in philadelphia pennsylvania he is uh, currently pursuing his doctorate he's a phd student in i'm going to try to say this it is ethnomusicology so i hope i've said that right because this is a very uh, fresh term for me but yeah he is pursuing his phd at the university of pennsylvania he is a tabla disciple of dr rishitosh kumar of the banaras gharana and also a student of hindi and urdu so it's really very commendable to see that uh, someone is taking so much of interest in an indian cultural instrument and following indian culture normally this uh, segment is conducted in english i do it in english so that uh, we have various audience tuning in but today is going to be fun to have some uh, conversations in hindi as well so i'm going to without any further delay go to bring vincent on board here you go hi vincent uh, welcome to next gen satare really very excited to have you on board today uh, i gave a brief intro about you so how are you doing today i'm doing all right it's uh, great to be on i really appreciate you having me meghnaji Oh thank you so much and um, I know I'm really interested to ask you kaise hai aap aaj aapko kaisa lag raha hai Main bilkul theek hu abhi um performance ki taiyari wo kar raha hu to ummeed hai ki aapka audience jo hai unko acha lage 
Wonderful. It's so nice to hear you um, say so much in Hindi. We will continue on that. But right now, I'm pretty sure our audience is looking forward to your your um, awesome tabla playing. So I'm going to just uh, let you have the stage, bring you on, and uh, take it from there. Here you go. All right. Thank you. Um, hi, everybody. Um, namaskar, Adab, um, Sabko. Um, uh, thank you again, uh, Bharat FM, for having me on this program. And um, I hope I can do justice to the uh, uh, flyer that has been made for this event. Um, so, you know, I thought today I would just play a few compositions in between some of our interview discussion and any questions that the audience might have. Um, and as Meghna Ji mentioned, uh, I am a disciple of um, uh, Dr. Rishitosh Kumarji in the Banaras Gharana, and um, maybe we can talk more about Gharanas later, but this is the sort of sixth and last um, Gharana that's recognized in tabla playing. So I thought that first I would uh, start with a composition that is sort of characteristic of the Gharana, and that um, my uh, Dada Guruji was particularly well known for performing. Um, and this is called a Bant. Um, and uh, Bant is a compositional form of tabla that is unique to the Banaras Gharana. Um, a lot of other people in different Gharanas might put it under the uh, moniker of Akaida, which you might have heard of if you're um, interested in tabla, um, but it's actually sort of a separate thing. And I can talk more about this composition later, but um, it actually has some of its roots in um, Nakara performance on the subcontinent. So the kettle drums that are performed in different um, political and religious ceremonies historically um, in India and also outside India, but especially um, well known in North India. And um, I'll just, before getting into it, just tell you the bowls of this composition, just cause I hope today you'll be able to maybe take something away that you've learned from this, um, you know, uh, as far as how these, the origins of these compositions or how they're constructed, since we often hear a lot of different things that people play. But one of the things I've really been attracted to within the Hindustani music tradition is the fact that many performers really want their audience to understand the theory and logic behind what they're playing. So, you know, I'm somebody from outside of the culture and um, have sort of learned from outside and, and um, not as a hereditary performer, obviously. So um, I have some disadvantages there, but I've, I've tried to do my best to um, also learn about the, the tradition uh, that I'm playing in as well. So this first composition, Bond, um, Bond the, the bowls are Dige Dina, Tirik the Dina, Dage na Tike Tinara, Tike Tina, Tirik the Tina, Dage na Dige Dinara. So hopefully you'll hear that when I play it. Um, and I'm going to go ahead and turn on my electronic nagma here um, since we don't have any sarangi or harmonium accompaniment. Thank you. 
um, also turns into a composition called Luggy, which I'll play now, which is sort of a distillation of the bowls within the bond. So, um, So that was um, Bond, uh, which is the introductory composition I wanted to play. Um, I hope you you enjoyed that. Um, and again, this is basically a composition that that derived largely from people playing kettle drums, which was adopted into the classical repertoire. And in some of my own research, I was able to talk to some of these kettle drum or nakara players about this, as well as some tabla players in Benares who sort of talked about the bant as being a form of classical repertoire that derived directly from the folk tradition. Awesome, awesome. That was amazing. And just to let our viewers know and uh, anybody who's listening that we are also right now live on our Bharat FM app on the Chicago stream. So uh, anybody who is on there listening will be able to listen live to you as well without watching you on Facebook, just in case if they are, they don't have it on. And I've got a, a few compliments, uh, Bitan Basu, actually, I would like to thank Bitan Basu for uh, referring you because that's how I got your reference and really uh, a wonderful reference. So thank you, Bitan. And she is saying absolutely wonderful. Uh, special thanks to uh, Mr. Soham Basu as well. Then we have Aparna Gardgil saying, awesome to see Vincent playing tabla, kudos. We have uh, Naina Sarasrapudde saying that was awesome. So, so I'm glad uh, we have audience and they're showing interest. So really encouraging. Thank you so much, uh, dear listeners and viewers. And anybody, if you have any questions for Vincent, I think Vincent is open to questions as well regarding uh, what he's pursuing and what he's playing. So Vincent, I do have a question from my side to you. Uh, how did, uh, I mean, growing up in America, being an American by birth, uh, people are normally into piano, drums, guitar. How was that you got interested in tabla and especially in Indian uh, culture or languages? You know, my introduction to music first was not through Indian music and um, I actually kind of played a number of different instruments uh, growing up, but mainly uh, trumpet and then drum set. Um, so a lot of my background in performance um, comes largely out of the jazz and African-American music tradition. And, um, you know, that is, you know, as many talk about a sort of improvised music, and, um, you know, a lot of jazz musicians over the years, I think, have shown interest in, in Indian music um, from John Coltrane to many others afterwards. And, you know, I, I was lucky enough to have grown up in Eugene, Oregon, which, um, you know, is a place that sometimes some Indian musicians would 
tour um, from abroad. So sometimes when they were on their American tours, they would make a stop in Eugene. So I don't remember who the musicians were, but I, I do remember going to one of these concerts when I was pretty young and really being captivated by the tabla and just the music in general. So, you know, it was something I always was interested in learning more about. Um, but, you know, because I didn't have really any way of learning and I didn't really know any Indian people growing up, really, um, I, you know, never really thought of seriously studying it. So um, I guess later on when I was in college, I, I was actually sort of doing more academic study of India and taking other classes with regard to South Asia. And I ended up studying abroad in, in Delhi for, for a year. Okay, okay. And at that time, I um, was not planning on studying music there at all. So I had just sort of gone to study history and, and try and learn Hindi as well, since I had no background in that. But, you know, the director of my study abroad program happened to have learned tabla um, before, and I was able to get connected with my uh, now Guruji at that time. So I was very much kind of happenstance that it worked out that way. But then um, that sort of started taking on a larger and larger role the longer I was uh, living in India. Okay, well, yeah, that's awesome to know because uh, definitely, I mean, I'm born and brought up in India uh, following music, so I'm always biased when it comes to music, be inclined to more Indian music and classical music. So it's always good to see young generation uh, following that, you know, and keeping that alive. So, uh, so like, do you, uh, I remember introducing you as a PhD student of uh, ethnomusicology. So what does that really mean? <laughs> so um, really, you can just think of it as the study of music and uh, not just the music itself, but also its relationship to culture and society. So, um, you know, a lot of what I'm interested in, for example, is sort of the historical and cultural basis of, of this kind of music. And, you know, really any kind of music can be studied from an ethnomusicological perspective when you think about it, whether it's Indian music or uh, anything in America or Europe or elsewhere. Um, so, you know, that was kind of a way for me to bridge my, my interest in India in general um, with also my interest in music. And it's sort of a nice marriage of of those two aspects because actually in my undergrad I, I studied religious studies um, even though I perform music and stuff but it wasn't until kind of later on I had no idea what ethnomusicology was either okay. um, so but you know eventually somebody um, informed me about that this is actually like a something that you can do um, and and study as well as um, learn what you're studying so a lot of what we do in ethnomusicology um, is not just be content with kind of reading about books about the thing or uh -huh. sort of theorizing about it, but also trying to immerse oneself in the tradition that you're learning in. And that's uh -huh. something I have an interest in as a performer in general. So um, it kind of works nicely with also writing about Music. Okay, wow. okay. Uh, right now, I do have a comment that came up from Aparna. She's saying a very inspiring story. And she's saying music has no boundaries. So definitely, I would agree with that. And I have a question from uh, actually my husband, he plays guitar. Mm -hmm. And he has a question for you. He's also now listening to you. He said an awesome job you did. So he wants to know if there are any similarities. Do you find any similarities uh, studying the historical perspective of this instrument with anything that you learned here? Um, I mean, I, I think everything that we call sort of classical music these days, I mean, mm -hmm. it, it didn't come out of thin air, right? So, I mean, a lot of um, music that we we see as kind of high art, which is including Indian classical music, really emerged out of the people's culture. Um, and I, I think you can see that, especially in the United States with what we call jazz right now. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, some people in recent years have, have attempted to call it America's classical music, which is kind uh -huh. of a 
controversial term, but it does speak to how it has gained a sort of prestige globally as a kind of, um, you know, on par creatively with composers in the in the European classical tradition but you know that that music also came out of the blues and and other uh, folk traditions that are sort of unique to this perfect um, this this country yeah, I, I think uh, what yeah. you're saying is pretty much makes sense and yep so uh, do you want to I have a, actually Soham has uh, sent out a question um, and he says Adam Vincent I would love to hear more about your conversations with artists in the music community across your different research sites in India. So definitely, yeah, we would be we would love to hear that too. Uh, I don't know if you want to go ahead and play a piece before we come back to our conversations. Sure, sure. sure. Okay. Yeah, I can do that and then bookmark that question for afterwards. Perfect. Mm -hmm. I will bring you on stage then. There you go. All right, so um, the next composition I like to play, actually, before I get into that, I just wanted to say that I started with the Bond because it is sort of recognizable to many people who have heard solo tabla in the sense that you have a fixed kind of basic composition that you do many variations of. But um, one of the things that is major in the in the Banaras Gharana is this emphasis on um, Tukara, Chakradar, Paran, all of these compositional forms in tabla that are exist besides this, this kind of kaida or bond based thing where you, you just do many, many variations. So these are sort of standalone compositions um, unto themselves that you don't do variations on, but are kind of a composi compositional unit. Um, like I said, in themselves. So I'd actually like to play one that my uh, Guruji uh, composed. And I thought this would be interesting for some of the audience here, um, especially maybe um, some of the younger Indian American audience that is familiar with, with certain forms of kind of Bollywood culture and things like that, but maybe not as much with Indian classical music, because my Guruji actually uh, titled this Antakshari Paran. So um, I'm sure I don't need to explain what Antakshari is, but basically it's a sort of game that is very popular in India, you know, when people are just sitting around with their friends or doing whatever and decide to start singing together and, you know, sp singing Bollywood songs in particular. So, you know, nobody really remembers a full Bollywood song, right? So all the lyrics, so you might just sing one phrase from that. So, and then that would end on any kind of syllable, um, depending on what phrase that you ended on. So if it ended in ma, you know, the next person in the game then has to start a phrase of a Bollywood song on that same syllable. So that's sort of the concept of Antakshari. And in this composition, my Guruji actually applied this to a classical tabla form, the Paran. So, I'll just uh, recite a few of the bowls in hopes that you can kind of see how this is playing out in tabla. Um, so the first phrase is So just a little slower. So that ends in kradha, right? So then the next bowl has to start with that syllable. So, kradha, kradha, and then that ends in na. Na, nagina, na, 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 so I'll go ahead and play this now. Um, Thank you. 
also, I'll just take the chance to explain one more thing about um, that composition that might be useful when you're listening to um, other tabla players that are playing, you know, other things besides this, is the idea of tihai, um, which is essentially a three-part repeating phrase that often concludes um, a composition. And then th at the very end of that uh, phrase, you end up coming out on the downbeat, as we would call it in Western music, or the sum, as it's called in, in Hindustani music. So um, you can hear that in this composition as well at the end, which I didn't recite, but um, I can try playing it again if, if anybody's interested. <laughs> As you see there, it's sort of a similar phrase repeating three times. Um, and that's something you'll hear a lot, not just in tabla, but also vocalists or instrumentalists doing it as well. Um, yeah. Wow, that was awesome. Actually, I got a couple of messages saying, uh, if you can just replay that, if you were able to do that like in a continuous manner, that would be awesome to listen to that again. So would you want to do that? Sure, I can I can play it one more time. <laughs> yeah, like the total continuous manner, kind of it was sounding it was sounding so awesome. So I'll, I'll let you do that and then we'll come back. Wow, that was mind blowing. I have uh, some compliments that have come in. So I have uh, Naina saying, Vincent, really love how nicely you explained it and enjoying the tabla antakshari. Actually, that is a mind blowing concept, an amazing concept. I also have uh, Amol saying, bringing antakshari to musical instrument is amazing. And uh, you playing it so nicely is so soulful. So actually an amazing concept of bringing the, because Antakshari is like every Indian uh, is something which just comes, uh, they are born with it, love, the love for Antakshari. So I think um, wonderful. I have Bitan Basu saying mind blowing, Vincent. I have Eileen Jones who has joined us. So thank you for joining us. She is saying so cool and just a matter of practice to know when to start the tihai. So wonderful. And I think uh, people are enjoying your show. So I'm really glad we could uh, have you over and, you know. So uh, yeah, I, there was a question which Soham had asked you. Would you want to uh, talk about that? It was about various interviews. Um... Yeah, if you can have, uh, if you have a small brief uh, something about that uh, some conversations with Indian music at artists you've had he was asking about that yeah well I, I mean I have interviewed a, a quite a few tabla players and spoken with them generally within the Banaras Gharana in particular and um, you know it's definitely an interesting experience because um, you know one I'm a foreigner but also you end up studying with a particular guru and then you know, um, as people probably know who have <laughs> engaged with um, Indian classical music, there's often different rivalries between people or, yeah. you know, different kinds of, um, you know, ways that, that people like to talk about the authenticity of what they're doing. So, mm -hmm. you know, oftentimes I think when people learn, they sort of learn in one particular direct, like lineage within a gharana that is kind of traced through um, 
uh, specific people um, and then kind of don't necessarily um, engage with other people in that gharana, let alone people in other gharanas. So, I mean, one thing that's been interesting for me is to kind of see about how other people in Banaras think about their tabla tradition. Okay, um, okay. You know, and, and there's often different kinds of perspectives. Like for one, I know that you're a dancer as well, uh, Magnaji, and, you know, there's the, the community that historically plays um, tabla in Banaras, this Kathak uh, Mishra Biradri, you know, they have been involved right, in right. dance as well. So, you know, there's very much an intimate connection between tabla performance as well as dance that you might miss out on if you don't talk to somebody from that community, for example. Right, right. True, true. So, yeah. Uh, so, uh, is there like uh, a relation between Hindi and the study of the tabla that you're doing? Yeah, I, I think there definitely is. Um, I mean, one of the reasons why I did make an effort to try and learn Hindi um, when I, when I went to India was also because it was very difficult for me to co communicate with my Guruji uh, who doesn't really speak English, um, you know, as well as just the vast majority of people you might come across on the streets in general. Um, and, you know, I think, like I was saying earlier, I like to approach music, not just as the music, but also its relationship to culture as a whole. And if you really want to understand India, I think you do have to understand languages of which there are so many um, across the country in different states and within states. So, right, um, right. Mm -hmm. so, I mean, one, one very direct co connection obviously is in the syllables or bowls that go along with the tabla. So, you True. know, I can't pronounce those as fluently as a native speaker, for example, but it is, a very good practice, at least for me, with pronunciation, for example, or, you know, kind of internalizing how the music might also come in to a linguistic pattern and vice versa. Wonderful, wonderful. We do have a few compliments. We have Mr. Sandeep Basu. Um, well, he uh, thanks Sandeep for such a wonderful compliment. And he's saying, dear Vincent, uh, thank you for this beautiful presentation to make our Sunday morning glow. Uh, so that's an appropriate, uh, I think, uh, compliment in Hindi. And then we have Bijan Basu saying, as he's a Kathak dancer. He's a very good Kathak dancer. So he is saying that as a Kathak dancer, it is wonderful for him to uh, listen to this. And you spoke about dance and tabla. Of course, Kathak dance uh, can't be complete without a tabla. And keep up the great work. Then we have a uh, Suparna Chakravarti, who herself is a very talented person. A, uh, she's actually the CEO of a Global, um, it's a Real Talk is Motion, a very good singer actually she is, a great singer. So she's enjoying the show as well and she said nice discussion. So I think it's really very interesting to see your point of view as an American looking at the Indian culture. And uh, this is Bharat FM, so it's, uh, you know, less said about this, but um, I would uh, let you go on if you have uh, something more to present to us right now. Yeah, I can play another composition right now. Okay, thank you. I'll, yeah, I'll just... Yeah, so, you know, I, I was trying to select a few things that just might be interesting to people. So the next one I wanted to play is another Paran type of composition um, called uh, Krishn Yashoda Paran. So this is actually related to sort of the early childhood of, of Krishna and his mother as well. Um, and, you know, as anyone would know in India, you know, Krish Krishna is seen as being sort of very naughty and mischievous in his youth and going and eating other people's butter and all things like that. So this composition was actually created um, based on that sort of story. So the first part of the composition I hope you'll hear um, is a basically Krishna's mother scolding him for what she has been told by other women in the community. Um, you know, he came into my house, he ate my butter, he's being so naughty. Um, and so it's it's kind of a very typical Banarasi sort of 
uh, style in which the bulls are very heavy and forceful. So, you know, a lot of people talk about Banaras Garana Tabla being loud and sort of bombastic, but really it's, you know, people like to talk about the sort of vazan or weight with which people play the bulls, which, you know, if you hear somebody better than me, you can really get a sense of that in, in the Banaras Garana repertoire much more than in other, other Garanas. And then the last part of it is actually Krishna sort of responding, um, you know, saying ki, uh, koi galati nahi ki, um, you know, why are you, why are you scolding me? I didn't do anything wrong. And so you can kind of see this again, conversation going on within the composition. So I'll, I'll go ahead and attempt to play that. Um, you could kind of see um, uh, the, the sort of contrast between those sections. Maaf ki jega mera haat thoda sa phas raha hai pehle section mein, but um, yeah, thoda sa soya hua hai baat karte hua hai. Um, but if you uh, can kind of see that that it's actually the theme thaw pattern um, for those of you who are musicians at the end that is being played, but not at the same rate as the nagma. So when I was playing. might think of that as just being but actually it's going over a faster tempo three times so it kind of functions as a as a the high um in that in that composition wow that was awesome um i have i know uh, Malik Tatani saying awesome as i said uh, my husband he himself plays guitar well and uh uh, actually knows a lot of her music. So he has uh, sent your compliments saying uh, your tabla is speaking words. So I guess that's a very big compliment. And uh, he has said uh, tabla ke knows a shabd bol rahe hain. So and I, I could see that, you know, so uh, I, I hate to keep uh, breaking this in between, but uh, we really like would, uh, it was sounding so awesome that you just keep on playing and we just keep listening to the tabla. That's how the feeling comes up. So um, I don't know if you have something more right now to go with or just you want to play the same piece again. It would be awesome to hear that again. I was going to play. So, okay. um, and, uh, and then that will kind of be the, the, <laughs> the rest of the material I have prepared. Um, but I'll just go ahead and play them back to back. Yeah, awesome. Um, I mean, and then, just keep playing. I mean, I would say just keep playing and we'll come back then. Once you're done, just uh, we'll get you right. back. So here you go. It's all yours. Thank you. Um, so the next compositions I would like to play are um, 
sort of chakradhar tukaras um, that are themselves in this kind of three-part form as a composition. So um, the first two are actually called farmayashi chakradhar. Um, you know, farmayash means request in, in Urdu, and they're often, you know, I think the story goes uh, that, that sort of these were requested by patrons from tabla players as sort of special compositions to play under certain circumstances. Um, so you'll hear, um, and there's a there's a certain structural um, way that they are organized um, that is basically the three part thing at the end is hitting on the sum or downbeat. Um, the first of the three is hitting on the sum or downbeat the first time through. The second of the three is hitting on the sum the second time through, and the third of the three is hitting on the sum the third time through. So I'll go ahead and attempt the um, parhant or speaking of the bulls um, before playing the first one and then continue from there. फरमाइशी चक्रदार सुनाना चाहूँगा एक मैं पढ़ा नहीं करूँगा इस बंदिश का लेकिन मैं मैं बजाऊँगा अभी The next composition and the final one that I'll play is a Kamali Chakradar. So it's related to the uh, Farmayashi compositional form, but um, instead of it just being the first part of the three part thing hitting on the sum the first time through, the second one the second time through, and the third one the third time through, it's actually three parts within those three parts. So it's a sort of the first of the three. Um, well, I won't go into the details too much, but you can listen to that. 
um, and, and see if you can pick it out. But basically, it's threes within threes that you'll hear with this. So um, that's that's all I have prepared for today, but I hope you enjoyed those um, compositions. And as you can see, I just wanted to echo one thing I said earlier, you know, there's a very kind of forceful and energetic aspect to specifically the Banadas Garana style that I wanted to capture with those compositions. Awesome, and you captured it beautifully. It was amazing, as I mentioned. Uh, I don't want to stop listening to it, and the force, the it's it's coming through so well. So it was a fantastic. I have uh, I have compliments pouring in. I have Naina saying thanks for. I mean for having you here, of course, so thoroughly enjoying your performance. I have a very uh, senior person also who has joined in and watching you, Mr. Vasant Vaikar. So uh, Vasant ji is saying uh, excellent narration and also another uh, person, Vilas Sarpatvatri. Uh, Vilas ji is saying, can you accept a disciple 70 years old like me. So I think <laughs> Vilas Ji is 70 years old and impressed. And that is such a big compliment, uh, Vincent, to you. I am so happy uh, that uh, people are joining and enjoying your show. Eilina Jones is saying wonderful. Um, again, Naina is saying that was simply superb, enjoying it. And I think people are enjoying your aspect where you bring your Hindi into picture. So it's so difficult. Uh, I mean, Hindi is not an easy language. And when you have to say the bowls, uh, it's a tongue twister. So for you to actually uh, adapt to that and being so good at it is amazing. It's truly commendable. So uh, you said, uh, uh, like, do you... Have you made any efforts to connect Zaz music to Indian music? Like, have you done that? You had mentioned something about that earlier. Yeah, so, um, you know, that's kind of been one of my ongoing interests. And I, I did actually do some composing myself um, that I ended up performing several years back with a sort of small group jazz ensemble with um, saxophone, uh, drums, piano, bass, and actually a, a viola player as well. So um, that that was something that I, I sort of experimented with a few years back and would definitely like to do more of in the future. And, you know, there's a lot of, a lot of people who have tried to uh, fuse jazz music with Indian music, I think with varying levels of success. You know, some of it's not that convincing, especially for people who haven't necessarily tried to learn Indian music properly. Um, I think that definitely helps with you when you're trying to do any kind of fusion project and vice versa. So, right. you know, when I did my initial experiments with that, I didn't know as much as I know now, and I, I have a lot, a long way to go from here. So hopefully um, if I, I do something like that in the future, I'll be able to, um, um, continue to develop in that direction okay well that was awesome so um have you like what have you learned about india by studying tabla or the hindustani music and i mean how different do you find it from american music if you'd like to explain that well that that's a difficult question in the sense that um it's a huge topic but i think um 
you know, one of the things you see in India, I, I mean, just coming back to this concept of gharanas or sort of lineages of performers that are based out of a certain city originally, and then sort of become a tradition that is associated with certain styles and certain performance lineages and in, in forefathers and foremothers and that kind of thing. Um, you know, I think that close linkage between you know, one's social life in the in in sort of community and music is is still very strong in India. Um, and you know, and there there's some ways in which music in this country has has kind of um, gone away from that a little bit, especially in more recent decades, where I think you especially see it in in a lot of pop music, where people are just kind of trying to be as original as possible or, you know, have their own sound in a way that is sort of not related to anyone that came before them. So I think that sense of history and tradition is, is very strong um, in the Indian context. And, you know, obviously that's changing a lot with, with globalization. And then, you know, even with um, foreigners like myself, of which there are quite a few who, who uh, learn Indian music, but, you know, I think the best thing that um, people in India, as well as people from outside like myself learning, um, can do is, is try and immerse themselves as much as possible in that, that kind of traditional knowledge. Wonderful, Vincent. Um, I have Sandeep Basu saying, uh, well, he's saying he agrees with Amol, that's my husband who was uh, talking about your music, that you are playing uh, crisp with balls and verses. Then I have uh, Mr. Uh, I'm sorry, that's Satan Yulhern saying uh, fascinating discussion. So I think people are enjoying this discussion. This a different type of uh, outlook and aspect that you have brought to Tabla and fantastic performance. Thank you, Vincent G. That's what uh, they were saying. So I think uh, this has been a very nice session. I personally enjoyed the whole discussion, knowing so much more. I mean, I've been listening to Tabla since I was a kid, but to look at this with another aspect, another angle is fantastic. So thank you so much for that, Vincent. Uh, wish you all wish the you best all the for your future. For your future. Your, uh, you said about fusing the jazz music with Tabla. With, that was an awesome concept. So wish you the very best in your um, PhD as well. So hoping uh, you finish that off soon. And um, I guess, is there anything else you would like to say before? I mean, unfortunately, we have come towards the end of the show. So we'll have to let you go, sadly. But anything you want to say, you want to play the last time? Because it, it would be really awesome to hear you again just one time before you go. Oh, well, I didn't really have anything else prepared. But, um, you, you know, just want I to play the same thing again. Maybe, um, yeah, I'll, I'll just because there were some questions, I mean, I can uh, sort of just improvise a little bit um, the, on yeah, the tabla. The, the and, the uh, you know, and, yeah, the Yashoda and the Krishna thing that you, the, you, that you played was awesome. I mean, that really was um, very, very soothing too. So I will let you play a little bit more and then I will let you go. I okay, think I'll just a uh, experiment a little bit. And, okay. you know, because um, I think that's also important with music, you know, um parampara ke hisab se chalte hain. कुछ मतलब अपनी खुद की सोच भी होनी चाहिए इसमें तो परफेक्ट परफेक्ट वेरी राइटली सेड या
Wow, that was mind blowing. That was awesome. I'm quickly going to read you some compliments. We have Aparna Gadgil. She is herself a very good singer. She is saying, uh, well, uh, Aparna, you're very welcome. I'm glad you could join today. And she sends your best wishes. And that was awesome. She says, uh, Naina is saying, kya baat hai? Then I have a very big compliment because it's coming from a big person. Uh, that's Mr. Mayang Chaya. He's a big personality. Uh, Journalist by profession, I can say, but he has interviewed many big uh, celebrities uh, from Indian film industry and also he's, uh, he's on Wikipedia. That's all I can say. So that's the big personality we're talking about. Um, and he has actually sent you compliments. Uh, Vincent, that was sharp and assured. My compliments to you. So I think that's a big compliment and blessing coming from uh, such a big personality. So thank you, Mayanji, uh, for that. And uh, Vincent, uh, would hate to let you go today, but uh, we have to do that. So thank you again for being on this show today. Uh, was lovely listening to you and your um, views and opinions and discussion. So best luck from me and all of us here at Bharat FM. Uh, wish you all the best. All right, thank you so much, Megan Haji. And, You're and welcome. Bye-bye. So friends, I hope uh, you all have enjoyed this wonderful tabla performance by this young next-gen tabla player. So it is really so interesting to watch. Um, I mean, he is an American-born following Indian culture with the uh, tabla. So it's really interesting and it really makes your soul happy somewhere to see that Indian music is getting some importance because uh, truly Indian music is uh, one of its own kind that I can say. So with that, friends, uh, thank you very much for joining the Next Gen Sitare today with me. And this is uh, Meghna signing off for today. We'll be back in a couple weeks with another Sitara on this Next Gen Sitare program only on Bharat FM. And thank you again. Have a wonderful week. Take care. Tata. Goodbye. Stay safe. This is Bharat FM. Bajega Bharat, Jumega Bharat. यह है भारत एफएम बजेगा भारत झूमेगा